Hello, I'm Joel. And I'm James from Better Music. And today we are very fortunate to have the first ever Roland TD50 in Australia. And um, we have broken our video today up into a number of chapters and we're going to put those on the screen for you. So if you want to jump ahead to any of the chapters, you'll be able to do that just by clicking on the chapter markers on the screen. We're going to have a look at the overview of the TD50 range. Um, we're then going to have a look at the four elements that are new to this kit. So the TD50 module is all new, the digital snare drum is new, the digital ride cymbal is new, and the 22 inch um, kick drum trigger is new. And then we're going to finish up this video just with a bit of a discussion about some of the possibilities that we see for the TD50 being used in live playing and in studio playing. Okay, looking at the overview of the TD50 range, um, TD50 kits are available in three configurations. There's TD50K, TD50KV, and TD50KV with the 22 inch kick trigger, which is the kit that we've got here today. But what's common between all of them is the module, the snare drum, and the ride cymbal. But as soon as you go from the K or the KV, all the pads change as well as the rack. So new toms, new cymbals, new hi-hat, and a new bass drum. We're gonna take a look at the TD50 module now. Um, all new for this drum kit, and it is a very powerful piece of equipment. Now, there's lots to tell about this, and there's no possible way for us to tell everything in the time we have. So we've just picked out the features of the TD50 module that we think are probably gonna get the most use you know, in the real world. So I wanna talk for a second about some of the ins and outs. Okay, the first thing that I noticed when I looked at the rear panel of TD50 was the balanced outs. Okay, so for the first time, you've got a stereo pair of XLR balanced outs, you also have eight TRS direct outs uh, and uh, each tom or cymbal or bass drum, snare drum, each pad can be assigned uh, or a combination of pads can be assigned to those direct outs from the back of the TD50. So obviously that means no DI boxes required anymore. Uh, for live use, the balanced outs are going to be a really excellent addition. TD50 also has uh, a USB out and for the first time you can stream 10 channels of digital audio for multi-track recording straight to your computer via the one USB cable. Uh, that's going to be a really good feature. The feature um, that really I think has attracted most interest and probably got most drummers excited on TD50 is the fact that for the first time on a Roland module you can load third-party uh, drum samples of your choice onto the TD50 module. Um, now that means that you have the option for the first time of using samples that you might already be familiar with and you really like them mm -hmm. from your audio workstation, you know, from recording work that you might have done. You can take those samples, load them into the module, use them with virtually, well, with no latency. So you have all the advantages of playing the accurate triggering and the sensitivity on a roll and drum kit, but with drum samples of your choice. Mm -hmm. And it's 16 bit and 24 bit with the sample rate of 44.1, which is awesome. High quality. Yep, and so you can just load them in via um, an SDHC card. Mm. Um, you can layer the samples, so you can layer your own samples with internal sounds. Um, so there's a lot of possibilities there. Uh, we're going to talk a bit about that at the end of the video. So what we've done for today is we've got a drum kit set up here. Maybe Jimmy will tell us a bit about it. Uh, so this is a pretty infamous 
uh, metal drummer <laughs> from the band Meshuggah. It's Thomas Hark. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, we've got his kit from um, his, his little package. He's his done. library. So, you know, a lot of you guys out there will know of the, the drum pack, the Thomas Hark drum pack. Yeah. Um, so we've loaded those samples, those multi-layer samples in on TD50. So we'll just give you a couple of drum sounds now. Yep. Sounds huge. Okay, so I mean, here in the room, here in the room, that sounded pretty big. So you know, you've got some of those signature sounds, that kind of trashy China kind of stack sound, which has been set up on the rim of the tom pad. Let's just have a. Okay, so that's kind of a signature sound, um, and then obviously the rest of the drums have been sampled and. Um, as I say, these are third-party samples that we've loaded in on this kit. Um, so, you know, if you're a guy out there or a girl who is familiar with particular drum sounds that you like to use in your recordings, mm. and you have really been wishing that you could take those out with you or to jam, uh, to rehearse, to perform, well, now you can do that with no latency, um, with the accuracy, uh, and the sensitivity of the Roland drum kit. Okay, we want to take a look at the um, new digital pads on the TD50. Um, this is brand new technology. I don't think there's been any other electronic drum kit up until this point that actually uses um, a digital connection between the pads and the module. Um, so on TD50 there's two digital pads, uh, the 14 inch snare drum pad and the 18 inch um, ride cymbal pad. Now they connect to the TD50 via a USB cable and on the rear panel of TD50 you'll see there's three USB inputs so there is actually one spare so the kit can be expanded in future maybe they may possibly in future offer more digital pads um, but there is room there to add one more digital pad also on TD50. So um, Jimmy I'm just interested from your perspective as a player you know what it feels like to play on those new on those new pads. So the snare is quite nice. Um, it's a 14 inch. It's got a bit of weight behind it, yeah. so it feels a little bit more realistic when you dig in because I like something yeah. that gives a bit of you know so it feels solid when you play. Yeah. Um, the response is quite nice as well. Um, the digital uh, connection is an improvement. Yeah. So th so this is one of the things um, is that um, in the snare drum there is eight. Um, Trigger, uh, trigger sensors, so there's eight separate sensors in the snare drum, um, all that information is being fed back to the module digitally. And I had a chat with the Roland guys about that. They were basically saying um, there was no way to kind of achieve um, eight sensors in the snare drum pad and then send all that information back to the module using a standard quarter inch analog cable. They really had to develop the digital technology mm. just simply because of the amount of information that's coming back from the ride, uh, sorry, from the ride and from the snare drum back to the module. Um, USB connection was really the only way for them to achieve what they wanted to do. So I thought that was interesting. Mm. Yeah. And I think in reality, let, let's have a go at just doing a little bit of light, you know, light to heavy playing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the, I mean, I guess the idea is that with eight sensors on board, the idea is that the transitions from, um, you know, on past on past kits, whether it was snare drum or ride cymbal, you'd have zones, and you were used to getting one mm. sound from one zone, then a different sound from a different zone, and if it was a three zone, say cymbal pad, you'd then get maybe a, a third sound, like a crash sound from the, you know, the the edge of the cymbal, mm. and what the what the digital pads seem to do is blur the lines between where one zone starts and the next zone picks up. So the transitions as you move around the snare drum pad or as you move around the ride cymbal pad seem to us to be more fluid. Um, you, you don't have distinct zones um, on the snare or the cymbal anymore. It's more like an acoustic snare or more like an acoustic ride cymbal would respond as you play. Mm. 
Um, so um, we've heard a little bit of the snare. Let's just have a little bit of, hear a little bit of the ride cymbal. Yeah, so again, I'll, hopefully that's coming through on the recording. Maybe if you just had a go at some, some doubles. And... Okay, so again, hopefully you're hearing as Jimmy's playing around the, the cymbal there that um, you know the transitions are smooth between those bell and bow and crash sounds, which is a really good feature. I think also the size, like the, when I first saw the kit, I think just visually it was a different thing to have a 14, I mean, it's almost like a 14 by five, which of course is really familiar to us as drummers and an 18 inch cymbal's not out of place as a ride cymbal. So mm. I think the size and the weight, and the, weight. the weight's really important because it's probably the most acoustic drum-like mm. experience. Um, we'll talk about the bass drum in just a moment, but these three pieces here, it's probably the most acoustic drum-like experience I think I've ever had when I'm playing a, an electronic drum kit, which is really, really good. So let's take a look at the 22 inch bass drum. It feels just like an acoustic bass drum because it is, it is. an acoustic <laughs> bass drum. So when you're playing, it's not getting chased around, it's not sliding everywhere. Um, you've got the weight behind it, you can mm. feel the feedback. Um, yeah, it's, it's a lot nicer to explain experience. Um, especially for someone like myself who um, can get a bit carried away when he's playing live <laughs> and don't realise that I'm literally jumping on the pedal. <laughs> That's a good thing. Yeah. You can jump on this. <laughs> oh, no, wait. Don't try it at home. Um, yeah, I mean, I, th I think it, it, it feels really solid to play, doesn't yeah. it? It feels and, really solid. And it looks the part. It looks apart. Okay, and this is the big thing, isn't it? You know, is that, you know, we're all conditioned to think of a big round thing at the front of a drum kit, and, and now we've got it. Um, and we'll talk a bit about this at the end of the video as well. But um, um, I think in terms of playing feel and in terms of look, I think this is a really good addition. So this is the KDA-22. Now, it's important to note that Roland supplies this as a set of two heads and a little bit of mounting hardware that you need to mount it to your uh, acoustic 22 inch bass drum, okay? So you're just buying the heads and everything required from Roland, but you will need to have a 22 inch bass drum in order to fit this kick trigger unit to it. Um, the only other thing to say about this is that this one is a quarter inch output. Uh, what that means is that if you're already um, uh, an electronic drummer, uh, you can plug the KDA-22, this 22-inch kit trigger unit, into your existing module um, and it's going to work. So that is, I think, a, definitely an upgrade option that quite a lot of drummers are going to be interested in. You can use this with your existing V-drums or really any, any electronic drums that have the quarter-inch piezo input. We wanted to um, finish out this video by just um, having a discussion about where we think TD50 can be used um, live and in the studio. Um, and you know, Jimmy and I were talking about this before and on the face of it, there are actually some pretty good reasons to take electronic drums out on the road with you. Um, but we all know, at least where we are and the gigs that we go to, in reality, you don't really see all that many electronic drums out there at live gigs. But you know, there are some pretty major advantages, especially if you're going from venue to venue, and if you're going to be playing a different house kit every night, which is, I think, probably something you've had experience of doing, yeah. where you rock up and you don't really know what you're going to be playing sure. on. And there's any number of things that can be completely different from one show to the next. And what that can mean is that you are giving your audiences a different experience, obviously, every, every time. So, you know, it's... It, it can be easier to move an electronic drum kit around. You can send, go straight out to a PA system. You can control a lot of those variables, which you just can't do with an acoustic drum kit. You know, this is not gonna go out of tune under hot stage lights. 
Like we've all had that happen, yeah. you know, where a lug near to you falls out or whatever, whatever. You know, we've all had those things happen. So, you know, as I say, there are some good reasons. But, again, like we do get it, you know, that if you're doing a loud rock gig, mm. And then just for the stage volume and just kind of for the vibe and the presence, you, you're probably going to want an acoustic drum kit there. Mm. Um, so, you know, we're not saying that uh, suddenly electronic drums are going to pop up everywhere, but I think personally, I'll speak for myself, I think if there's ever been an electronic drum kit which can make the grade live, I think it's TD50. I think the visual aspect with the kick drum and the larger ride cymbal pad and the larger snare drum pad. I think that's an improvement visually. Mm. Um, and there are all, all those practical things that we were talking about. So, you know, going out of it to a PA system via balanced outs mm -hmm. um, is going to be really, really useful. I mean, what, what do you think, um, what kind of circumstances do you reckon this could work? Well, personally, I think smaller gigs, you know, wedding gigs, all that kind of stuff, yep. um, just to bring down the stage volume, it's gonna sound really nice you know, you can play at a kind of level that yeah. you want. Instead so, of, yeah, where you know yeah. that you're going to have to really change the way you play yeah. just to keep quiet enough, yes. this yeah. is going to, I think, provide a solution. I think one of my favourite ideas, though, is covers bands. You know, Def Leppard, Absolutely. you know, some Absolutely. signature kind of sounds. Gated reverb Gated on reverbs, the snare. <laughs> you know, in excess, that kind of stuff. You could really, you know, take advantage of loading that stuff in there and yes. going, okay, we're playing an in excess song, boom. Bang. Okay, now we're playing a Def Leppard song, boom. Now we're playing a Metallica song. You've Absolutely. got the stuff there ready for you, uh, which I think is pretty cool because you can really reference some of your favourite well-known sounds. Absolutely. You know, who doesn't uh, listen to, you know, five seconds of a famous drum groove that's got a signature sound and go, oh, and you know, I know because where that's of, you know it because of the sound. Exactly. And that's right. And I think the audiences, especially for covers bands, I think audiences like the familiarity. The familiarity. I think they want to hear those sounds, and it's really hard to achieve the range of what you're going to need to do on an average covers gig with an acoustic drum kit, uh, unless you've got some sort of magician at the, <laughs> at, the, at the sound desk. I think. There's probably an argument to say that this is a better tool for the job for a covers gig in that way. I think that's really good. Uh, for recording, um, electronic drums obviously have numerous advantages. Um, it can be quite a tricky task to really accurately um, capture an acoustic drum kit and to record it well does require a lot of gear and a good sounding room and, you and know, a lot of skill. <laughs> and a lot of skill, that's right. Um, electronic drums obviously do streamline that and make that a lot more simple. Um, TD50 in particular has got a couple of features which we think are very useful for recording. It's great that you can now send um, 10 discrete channels of digital audio out via the USB cable straight to your computer. Mm. That's a great feature. You can also use those eight analog direct outs so that if you're in a studio and if for whatever reason you want to run through some outboard gear or some pre's of your choice and you want to put some color or some compression on something on the way in, you can use the eight um, TRS analog outs for that, which is going to be really useful. Um, so um, it's definitely some advantages there. And around Canberra, we've had a few people selling their beautiful acoustic drum kits that they had in the studio, like the Yamaha Recording Customs, and re replacing it with a, a kit like this. Mm. Um, it's not necessarily because they wanted to, it's mm. more because it's in so in demand. Um, so many people come in and go, oh, where's the electronic drum kit? I've got my samples here, I just want to do this. I want to change thing la you know, things later in MIDI. Yep. Um, it also makes uh, playing a bit more forgiving mm. because you can snap it to the grid. <laughs> 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 Don't tell anyone. Yeah, I mean, this is the thing, isn't it, is that we talk to a lot of the guys around town and they, they know full well that they're going to end up sound replacing anyway mm. and that they're probably going to need to edit some MIDI information. Uh, shh. Um, but we know that happens. Anyway, that whole process be can become a lot more straightforward with an electronic drum kit from the start. Um, the other thing about TD50 in particular is that there are really some studio 
uh, type mm. processors which you can now do on board this module. So there is a multiband compressor in there, um, as we mentioned before, the transient designer so that you can tweak the attack and the sustain characteristics. So if there's a bit too much point on a snare drum sound, you can just bring that down a little bit. Or if you want a little bit more of the body or the shell, the ring, you can bring up the sustain. So the transient designer is in there, which is good. And then all the things you'd expect in terms of EQ and compression, room ambience, reverb, and a heap of other effects that are on board. So um, in terms of it being a studio ready piece of equipment, I think TD50 is going to be well at home in the recording studio. All right, so there it is, the uh, Roland TD50. Um, we think this drum kit probably shows the, um, the way forward for the V-Drum line. Um, interesting to see the adoption of the digital pad technology on this drum kit, and we probably suspect that we're going to see a bit more of that in future with V-Drums. Um, you know, we think TD50 looks good. We think TD50 feels good to play, you know, from the drummer's perspective. It sounds good. It's exciting that for the first time you can load third-party drum samples of your choice onto the module. You can then take that out, use it for live use, use it for studio use, use it for home use. So all in all, a pretty well-sorted piece of equipment, I think, um, would be a good summary. So listen, um, please leave any comments or questions that you have below. If you want to tell Jimmy he looks like Dave Grohl, you can do that. Um, and we will do our best to respond to those. And we'll see you soon.